It is 917 right now for parents cold and flu season really is far from over with and every season kind of has its own challenges, doesn't it? Are we preaching to the choir here, Rob Hughes? <laughs> we know better than anybody. <laughs> All three of us. Okay, really. so this morning we've got Dr. Taz Badia in studio. She's a pediatrician and also the founder of Center Spring MD. Great to have you here. Thank you. Poor Rob and his no. family. I'm just an example, though, of what <laughs> of parents and totally. kids exactly. and really kids in general are dealing with. Yes. And I don't know. I just don't remember this as much when I was a kid maybe I was constantly sick too well, I don't know. you know I mean you have little kids and what's right? happening right now we're seeing a ton of colds a ton of different viruses yeah. out the weather's changing on mm -hmm. a dime and so kids will catch viruses they usually bring them home and for parents you're really struggling to find answers how do you keep yourselves well how do you keep your kids well right so there are so many different ways to help and support your children as you're managing some, right? some of these colds and viruses I mean fever is a big symptom right, right? so Trying to really bring their fevers down is key, and many parents turn to children's Tylenol or acetaminophen. There's mm -hmm. been some shortages of that recently, and those are improving. But I think the big lesson is you want to be stocked on some of these fever reducers so your kids are at least comfortable. And, you know, Genexa, we are stocked, I I know, so Genexa makes a clean ac acetaminophen. It's kids' pain and fever. And the advantage of that is you don't have a lot of the artificial dyes and sweeteners in there that you'll see in some of the other brands. Okay. So that's the first rule of thumb. Bring the fever down, get them comfortable, mm -hmm. and then keep that congestion nice and loose, right? Because that's going to help keep them from getting those ear infections we were talking about or mm -hmm. from it turning into something more. What about for parents who are concerned about do they give their kids too much Tylenol or children's Motrin? I mean, it seems like my kids are sick so often and then they do have that fever so frequently that, of course, we don't want to just let them go without giving the medicine, but I'm like wondering, I'm like, how much of this right. is too much? Right. Yep. And you know, ideally what you want to work with is your child's immune system. So making sure they're resting, you know, sleeping well, hydrating, those are all going to be helpful in shortening how long they're dealing with a fever. Mm -hmm. But when they truly have a fever, when that temperature is going over like 101 or so, yeah. you don't want them sitting there miserable. 100%. They're not going to eat, they're not going to drink, mm -hmm. they're not going to cooperate. So that's where you really do want to give them a fever reducer. Okay. So he's got little ones. Right. I now am at a place where mine are teenagers, they're mm -hmm. 14. Mine too. And uh, yes. yeah, and one of, I have twins, and Gracie, my Gracie had early childhood asthma. Yep. So anytime the wind blows, that child is getting sick. I just said to Rob yesterday, I said, Gracie is sick again. Yep. She's got spring break coming up. Yes. She's got, she's gonna be yes. traveling actually to New York. And I'm like, Sweetie, How please, do well? please don't get sick. So right now she's sniffling. She's yep. got a little bit of drain. So what am I supposed to do? What I mean, I'm saying, suck down the uh, the vitamin uh, C. You know, yeah. uh, eat your clementines. Right. And... Well, I have I have some spring break rules and okay. travel rules in general. First of all, you want to be prepared, right? So make sure she takes with her her traditional vitamins. Mm -hmm. You want to take a fever reducer just in case something happens. Okay. It's a good idea to take something with uh, diphenhydramine, which is an allergy reducer. Genexa makes that too, a clean version of that. Mm -hmm. I think the spring break is the classic time for breaking out into allergy symptoms yes. as well. And so then also like the same rules like hydrating like every time you're on a plane you want to mm -hmm. drink at least a glass of water every hour or two to stay really well hydrated mm -hmm. sleeping well warning her oh. that sugar is sugar. going to deplete the immune system even further and okay. get her sicker faster mm -hmm. so helping her with like hey we're traveling these are some of the things you need to watch out for and then some folks will have some like nausea and motion sickness when they travel she does, yeah so ginger tea is a great okay. you know so ginger lozenges ginger teas those mm -hmm. are things I love mm -hmm. as well and then again there is a great motion sickness formula that Genexa makes also. Okay. What about whether regardless of how old your kid is when you should go see a doctor because I think a, a lot of parents point. deal with that it's like you know I don't want to wait for a week to see if this is something bigger than just a typical cold. Right. But at the same time you know a lot of times they won't be treated unless you have symptoms mm. for a certain period of time. Yeah, I have like a 48 hour rule, right? So if your child, especially <clears throat> younger children, are running high fevers for more than 24 to 48 hours, you probably want to get them checked out. Okay. If they're older children, mm -hmm. you could go a little bit longer, but you look not only at fever, but at their comfort. Like, are they right. eating? Are they drinking? Are they using the bathroom? Yeah. And if they're not comfortable, then it's important to get them checked out. Okay. So that makes sense. 48 um, hours for little ones, comfort level for the older ones. Oh. Some people you like so this time this time of year allergies you know are coming into play and sometimes those allergies then turn into yes, something else like maybe a sinus much, infection or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. 
do you like the nasal rinses? I do. Because a lot of people use those, you yeah, know, the neti pot or whatever. And that's such a great point. So many people are like, their eyes are swelling, they're, yes. you know, they're so congested. But using the, nas the saline to the nose uh -huh. a couple times a day can help really loosen up this congestion. Okay. I like steaming. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that. Okay. Get that pot of water on, get a steamer, add maybe a few little like uh, eucalyptus oil or rosemary mm -hmm. to it. It just kind of opens up the sinuses and helps everything to drain. And I would say the same rule for colds that there is for allergies, you want the stuff to drain out. The more you dry it up and thicken it up, that's yes. when you run more of a chance of it turning into an infection of some kind or lingering longer than it needs to. Yeah. So there were some For our remedies. little ones, we have the, the snot sucker because yeah. they want I remember the snot sucker. It's actual <laughs> torture that. for oh, those yeah, two little ones. Wow. Yes. Every night the when we green. lay them down on the bed, yeah. they know exactly what it is now, too. Don't so think I missed that, they, to oh, be man. honest. <laughs> it's just a screaming crying fest right before oh, bedtime. Yeah. We're oh, trying to clear them out before they go to sleep. This has been great information. Thank Dr. Taz, thanks for being here. Of course, thanks thank you guys for having me. All right, we've put this information and this interview, by the way, on AtlantaNewsFirst.com. So check that out. All right.